so I am also going to be reading you the book Zero Degree Zombie Zone by Patrick Henry Bass, illustrated by Jerry Craft. This is a really fun book, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to read the back. Bakari Katari Johnson is having a bad day. Tariq Thomas, the most popular kid in their class, is in his face again. And here comes Keisha Owens with all her bossy talking. On top of that, Bakari has found a strange ring that appears to have magical powers, and the people from the ring's fantastical other world want it back. It doesn't help that Bakari is so shy and scared to speak up and wishes he could hide under his desk in Miss Crumb's class at Thurgood, Thurgood Cleveland Wilson Elementary. Well, at least he's got his best friend, Wardell, who's always there to help, even in the scariest situations. Can Bakari and Wardell hold off the intruder's attempts and keep the ring safe and stand up to Tariq and Keisha all in one day? Let's find out. Okay. <clears throat> so chapter one. Bakari who? I squeeze my eyes shut and then open them again. Shut, then open. Shut, then open. Nope. My name is still there. Finally, I turn away. Wardell, why did you do this to me? Wardell shrugs. He's my best friend. Okay, pretty much my only friend. And half the time, I still don't understand what goes on in that oversized melon he calls a head. And this is one of those times. I thought it'd be good for you, he mumbles. Good for me? I can hear my voice going higher and higher. I sound more like my mom's ancient cat than a fourth grade boy. I stab my finger at the piece of paper tacked on Miss Crumb's bulletin board. There's my name under candidates for hall monitor and right below the only other name on the list. The only name that's ever been on the list or any other list ever in the entire history of Miss Crumb's fourth grade class at Thurgood Cleveland Wilson Elementary until today. How? I ask Wardell, trying to get out each word. Is competing with Tariq Thomas good for me? I slowly glance across the room. There he is, Tariq Thomas. Through good Cleveland Wilson Elementary's golden boy. Tall, charming, athletic. Tariq has it all. Including his own personal pep squad and enforcer rolled into one. Keisha Owens. The very same Keisha who is currently glaring at me from beneath the tower of curls that make her almost as tall as her cousin. What were you thinking? Bakari Katari Johnson, Keisha demands. Her voice carries across the room with the might of a lioness. Heads turn to look at me, then back at her, then at me. It's like a tennis match, and I'm the ball. You go up against my cousin, she continues. You're gonna get beat. You're gonna get beat hard. Tariq smirks. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't have to. Keisha says it all for him. Everybody knows Tariq's hall monitor, she warns me. He's always been hall monitor. He will always be hall monitor. That's how it rolls here at Thurgood Cleveland Wilson Elementary. You can't get in the way of that. You do, you'll get squashed. She slaps both hands together, then dusts me off like she's done with me. Only I know this is just the beginning. Well, Miss Crumb announces with a smile, I think it's nice that we have more than one candidate this time around. She looks at me with pity. Good for you, Bakari, for giving it a try. Her eyes flicker to Tariq, and I feel like she just added, not that it'll do you any good. Which is how I feel about it anyway. And why I'd ever have signed myself up for Hall Monitor in the first place. I wouldn't. Thanks, Wardell. 
What were you thinking, dude? I ask him through clenched teeth as I stir us away from, steer us away from the bulletin board and back to our seats. It's just about time to take roll, and I push my glasses up on my nose. Miss Crumb likes everyone in their seats neat and prompt. You know Tariq's gonna slay me. Maybe, Wardell agrees, squeezing his big bulk into his chair. I swear his head would look enormous on anyone else, but on him it actually looks small, like a cherry on a chocolate ice cream sundae. But you don't know until you try, he shrugs again. You just might surprise yourself. That's one of the things I like about Wardell, usually. He's always looking for the positives. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade, as my wise granddad used to say, and Wardell sure does like his lemonade. Times like this, though, I don't, I don't see exactly how lemonade's gonna help me much. With two candidates for hall monitor, Miss Crumb's gonna let the class vote. She likes putting some things in the hands of fourth grade people in her class, and the people love Tariq. Me? Not so much. Not that um, most of my classmates hate me, at least not as far as I know. They just don't think much about me at all. Most of them probably don't even know my name. Right now, I have two votes, me and Wardell. That's a landslide for Tariq. Miss Crumb starts calling roll, but I barely hear her. I'm too busy worrying about what's gonna come, um, what's gonna happen come election time. So here is a picture. We got Keisha telling off, I guess, who is that? Oh, I think that's Tariq. And that is Bakari, and that's Wardell. So what do you think is going on? Okay. I reach into my pocket and find my granddad's lucky marble. It's a nice one, big as a quarter and pale gray, made of granite instead of glass. That marble's magic, he'd say every time we played. Pure magic. All you need in life, Bakari, is three things, light, courage, and power. You bring the courage and the will. This here marble will do the rest. He always had it in his hand or in his pocket. Always. One day, a month back, after he got real sick, he handed it to me. Hang on to this for me, Bakari, he said, and trust the magic. Remember, light, courage, power. He died just a couple days later. Rolling that marble back and forth between my fingers makes it feel like he's still here with me. But I'm not even sure he could help me out of this mess. Johnson Bakari Katari, Miss Crumb calls and I raise my hand. At the same time, I hear Keisha say, Who? To Tariq, loud enough for the whole class to hear. A bunch of kids laugh. My stomach does a flip-flop. Great. After attendance and Tariq responding, Yes, ma'am, to his name, we get our math books. My stomach's still banging around, and I feel like I might puke. The constant whispers and giggles between Keisha and Tariq, along with the weird looks at me, aren't helping. Uh, Miss Crumb, I ask, holding up my hand, Can I go to the restroom? Miss Crumb's okay. A little strict, but not mean. And I guess I looked as bad as I feel because she takes one glance at me and nods. Here, Bakari. She hands me the bathroom pass. Not too long, okay? I nod and light out of there. But not before Akisha whispers, You can run, but you can't hide, loser. Ugh, I nod. Or out in the hall, I feel a little better. Especially once I hear... I can't hear Keisha laughing anymore. I know it's just nerves messing with me, but that doesn't make them stop. I head to the bathroom. Maybe some cold water will do the trick. I'm halfway there when a blast of air hits me across the face. 
It's a warm early fall morning. Did somebody leave a freezer door open somewhere? Then a glowing sharp blue disc appears out of the thin air, floating about even with my head. Whoosh! A pair of arms shoots out of it, pale blue and cold as ice, and grabs my shoulders. Ouch! The arms give me a hard yank, and I'm off my feet and falling head first through that disc. This day is just getting worse and worse. And that's the end of chapter two. Tune in tomorrow for, or that's the end of chapter one. Tune in tomorrow for chapter two. Um, before we leave, here's a picture of Bakari with his granddad's marble. Don't forget to take a quick note on your sheet about um, this chapter. So what was the most important thing to you? Um, to help you on your AR test. Maybe the fact that he's running for hall monitor because that's a huge part of this book is his competition with Tariq. Okay. See you later.